We're gonna talk about turtles today. We have three turtles in our classroom. So thanks to our little uh, Corona vacation, we have three turtles at my house right now. Um, this one is a box turtle and they live on the land and these two are water turtles. So if you had to guess uh, which two were most closely related, you probably would say the two water turtles are more closely related than the land turtle. And that's what I would have thought too. But I wanna show you a little chart because my students have been learning about how scientists classify and sort animals and so when we when we look at this we've got the box turtle who's over here and then we've got the red-eared slider and the Asian leaf turtle which are the turtles we just put in here and all of them are in the same kingdom they're all animals they're all in the same phylum chordata which we learned from our reading means they have a spinal cord. That doesn't mean that they have a backbone because not all of them do, but they all have a spinal cord. Um, they, are, they are all in the same class. They are all reptiles and they are all in the same order. But when you get down to family, the box turtle and the red-eared slider are in the same family. But the one that is from Asia, he's in a different family. Um, when you get down to the genus, um, the the box turtle and the red-eared slider are in the same genus, but the one from Asia is in a different genus. And of course, they're all from a different species. Okay, so since you're not dripping all over me, we'll talk about our turtle parts with this guy. Um, he is... Uh, he is a land turtle, and so he wants to blend in with his surroundings. So if he were on the forest floor and the sun was shining down through the trees, you could see how little dots of sun on the leaves and the rocks might look a lot like his shell. Uh, the top of his shell is called a, a carapace. And his carapace has a big like lump to it. He's trying to look like a rock or a log or things you might see on the forest floor as opposed to the shape of the water turtles, which are flatter, which are trying to look a little bit more like a leaf. This Asian leaf turtle even has these little indentations along his scales there to make him look even more like a leaf. Now, um, this shell has three parts. We've got the top shell up here, and actually on the bottom, if we look at the plaster on, the plaster on is two separate pieces. There's a little hinge right here, and there's also a little bit of a hinge right here on the sides. Now, if he were afraid of us, which he isn't, he would get all the way in his shell and close all up tight. And we wouldn't be able to see any of him. He would close up like a box where they get their name. Um, unfortunately, he can't do that anymore because we've let him get a little bit fat. Uh, so he, he uh, does not do that. I've only ever seen him do that once. Um, but that's different than, than the shell of the water turtle, which is all one piece. There is no hinge on the bottom. There's no hinge on the side, all one piece. Now, if you watched Franklin cartoons when you were a little kid, you might have seen the episode where Franklin was afraid of the dark and climbed out of his shell and drug it around behind him on a string. Um, turtles cannot do that because the the bones of this shell are actually their vertebrae. If you have a, a, a turtle shell, uh, we have one in our classroom uh, from a turtle that's no longer living inside. We can see that the spine is really hooked inside of there. These are bones that are covered. These scoots are covered by thin little things kind of like our fingernails. These are some that came off the last time I changed their water and they look really interesting through um, a microscope. We like to look at those in our classroom. We know that this fella is a guy. Um, he is a male because we can see that he has red eyes and with box turtles, red eyes mean that you, have, you are a male. Uh, he also has some long claws here and those claws would be uh, for two things. One is part of a little mating dance they do and another is for holding on, like he is right now, um, to be able to hold on to the female's shell. Um, this little mating dance they do is kind of interesting. The water turtles sometimes do this where they get nose to nose and then they bring their little paws up and do this little, little dance thing. Get back here, fella. 
Um, the other way that I know that he is a boy is because his shell, his, uh, his plaster on, is a little bit concave right here. It's a little bit dented in. Uh, when turtles are mating and he's going to need to spoon, he's going to not want to fall off. So along with those long claws, he's going to need that little dip in his belly there. Um, when we take a look at his tail, this is the part that fascinates me. When you, um, when you think about your dog, where your dog goes to the bathroom is on the dog's body, not on his tail. Um, but that's not the way that the turtle is designed. And one of the things my sixth graders have been learning about is um, that there are specialized cells and cells build tissue and tissue build organs and organs make systems and they all have specialized jobs. And the specialized job of this tail is for one thing, um, if it's going to go to the bathroom to, to swing that tail out away from the shell and, and to not poop inside of the shell. That comes in really handy. Um, but the int other interesting thing about this, I have a little picture that I drew. It can help us to, to figure out if we are looking at a male turtle or a female turtle. Um, the opening where they go to the bathroom is called a cloaca. It's one opening that is for a, a pee poop mixture. And if you are a male, that houses uh, those sex organs. Um, but if you are a female, that's where the egg is gonna come out. There's just one opening where all of that happens. So if you are a male, and this is a symbol for male, we have all, on all of our pet cages at school to, to tell whether we're looking at a male or a female. Um, this one has a longer tail and the opening is more on the bottom of the tail. But with the female, we're looking at a shorter, stouter tail and the opening is up closer to, to the shell. Um, during, during mating, that tail is going to be reaching around um, so that they can accomplish their goal of fertilizing those eggs. So, is that all I was going to say about you? Oh, he, uh, where did I get this turtle? This turtle um, came from someone who picked him up on their vacation in Tennessee. Not really allowed to do that. Um, if you are a child or if you have a permit, there are some reptiles and amphibians that you can legally uh, pick up and, and keep um, you know, to help you to learn about them. Um, but you can't pick up something and move it from one state to another, and then you really can't let it go. Um, that's what um, this person said, you know, hey, if you don't want this, we're gonna let it go. Um, that means he probably would have died because he would have had a hard time finding his way back to Tennessee, and so he would have wandered around looking for that same location where he grew up, and he would not have, uh, have not eaten and he would probably get hit by a car. Um, there's not a lot of predators that can get to them when they can close all up like this, but birds can pick them up. If a big eagle or a hawk picked them up and, and dropped them, they could crack this, and there are some animals that can get into that shell. So he probably wouldn't have survived if he wouldn't have um, moved into our classroom. Now, um, when he was out in the wild, since he's a male, if he would have come across a female, since they don't move really fast, and there's not a whole lot of them out there, um, an amazing thing that they can do is if he runs into a female and she does not happen to be ready to breed at that moment, he can go ahead and give her the fertilizer, then she can hold on to it inside of her body, carry it around for as long as she likes until she's ready to use that fertilizer to fertilize her eggs. Then she will fertilize the eggs and then she will dig a hole and lay them in the ground. And that's pretty cool. Now these guys, is water turtles. You can see that they are not the same species. Um, they're both male, but their shells are shaped a little different. They're both flat, trying to look like they are leaves. Um, this one is a red-eared slider. This is the most common pet turtle in North America. Um, and they are also <laughs> on the top 100 list of invasive species. They're supposed to live down in South America and maybe the Mexico, Southern United States, uh, but they do live in the wild in Ohio now because so many people have let them go. Um, they, they can survive our winters. You can see he gets his red, the, the red on the sides of his head is where he gets that name, uh, red-eared slider. Uh, he doesn't have external ears, but underneath of the skin, there is a middle ear there and he can hear using that. Um, this guy does not have those same markings. Um, I do like the markings on his belly. 
his stomach it's getting darker and darker as he gets older um, but he has a really really pretty show um, he has very black eyes where this one has eyes that have a little bit of a stripe to them interesting difference and and he has a very very dark shell both of them have webbed feet on the back and the front are kind of semi webbed but they've got those long nails again for uh, for breeding and for being able to uh, to hold on um, and the, all of these guys are omnivores which means if it's a plant they'll eat it if it moves they'll eat if it fits in their mouth they'll eat it they'll eat just about anything. Although these guys can only eat while they are in the water. They don't have a lot of saliva. So if you have a water turtle, you have to make sure that their water is plenty deep enough that they can swim underneath of their food and come up and, and grab those little pellets in their mouth with a mouthful of water mm -hmm. so they'll be able to swallow it. Um, this one does have a little bit of damage on his shell I wanna talk about. Uh, you'll notice right here it looks a little bit misshapen um, and one of the things that that sometimes happens since I've got some cool stuff in my room is if uh, if my door is unlocked and kids are there for practices or stuff sometimes kids come in and, and take a little look at the animals and uh, so the next morning when I came into school one day um, there was a big crack in the shell that those pieces were gone and so um, I think what happened is when he does this thing that we the kids call it air swimming He's trying to get away from me. Um, that scares kids because he has claws and he probably got dropped. It's possible they got into a big battle, but he probably got dropped. And so it did bleed and it, it did heal up and he's fine, but it did leave him uh, a little bit misshapen. Um, I really enjoy having the turtles. They are a lot of fun. Um, if you are thinking of getting um, a pet turtle, I would, don't get it from the wild. Leave the ones in the wild out there to be in the wild. Um, get a captive bred turtle, uh, preferably at the reptile show. The Ohio Reptile Show is once a month in Columbus at, in Hilliard, actually at the Franklin County Fairgrounds. And you're buying direct from, um, from a breeder that's very passionate about their animals and very knowledgeable about their animals. You're gonna get a healthy animal and you're gonna get their business card and, and their cell phone number and they're gonna want you to call them and ask them questions if you have any questions. Um, the downside of having um, having the, the water turtles is if you don't have a good filter, um, they do get stinky pretty fast because their food um, is made a lot of dead fish. You know, that's, that's what's in here is uh, some seaweed, some kelp, and some, some dead fish. So anything that they don't eat right away starts to stink pretty quickly. So we have to do some, uh, some pretty uh, often uh, water changes. Some people say, well, what about salmonella? Well, they probably are carrying salmonella. Probably so is your dog and your cat and pretty much everything that poops carries um, some salmonella in, in their body. 90% um, um, of most animals do. It's part of their digestion process. They need that good bacteria in there to to do that. Um, and if we get, if you ever have taken an antibiotic, you know that it can mess up your whole digestion because it kills off that good bacteria. Um, the food that that we eat um, sometimes can have salmonella on it. You hear about it with lettuce and things like that because you're eating the leaves that have been out in the wild where there have been animals. So uh, there could be some salmonella in this water right now. Um, there probably is. So that's why we wash our hands. That water is uh, is where they go to the bathroom and where they're doing all of their eating and drinking. And, and so when we're done, we're going to wash our hands with soap and water, um, just like you do um, after uh, doing your barn chores outside. So you keep yourself healthy. We're just going to be careful. So I hope you learned some stuff about turtles and uh, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks.